Hi, ladies and gentlemen. It's Dr. Julian Avoa. Over the past couple of days, we've been getting a lot of phone calls to the office uh, co with concerns from patients, my patients, who have gotten breast implants placed and concerns that they're heard that um, Natriol or um, Allergan has uh, pulled um, some of its implants from the Nutriol series off the market uh, related to um, some type of cancer. And first of all, I wanted to reassure our patients that I don't place uh, the type of implants that uh, there, that has been associated with the recall. Specifically, um, the Nutriol series of textured implants are the ones that have been recalled by the Allergan Corporation, along with uh, 12 other types of implants and expanders, all associated with textured outer uh, shell coats. Now, what's important to understand is the background and history related to this problem and why now all of, us, all of a sudden it's become uh, mainstream news when in reality we've been knowing that there has been a problem with uh, textured implants for uh, at, at minimum more than two years and the FDA has been studying this particular problem for the past um, nine years coming on ten years. So a little bit of background information. The type of implants that we're talking about are the Nutriol series or the Allergan Corporation series that are associated with the outer shell being composed of a textured silicone material, not smooth implants. I don't place textured implants in my patients, so the 3,000 plus patients that we've uh, placed implants in should not worry about an issue with the textured uh, outer shell because we use smooth implants in our patients. Next. Why is this important? Why is textured implants different from smooth implants? Over the past 10 years, there's, the FDA has been studying a particular type of cancer known as breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma. Okay, so let's just stick with anaplastic large cell lymphoma or ALCL as the acronym we're going to use in this particular conversation. Now, what has happened is, or what is believed to have happened, is the outer structure or the textured uh, structure of the implant, along with a potential bacterial contamination, increases the risk of patients developing a particular type of cancer known, known as lymphoma, which is of, of the non-Hodgkin series. Now, this, this can become malignant. It can become a malignant, malignant situation, and therefore it's important to be properly evaluated for this particular type of cancer. Although that it's not a type of breast cancer, because it's associated with a breast implant, and of course the implant being in the breast tissue, it is confused sometimes with it being a breast cancer versus a lymphoma. It doesn't really matter. Let's stick to the point. Cancer is cancer, and it's never a good thing. Okay, let's, let's stick to that. Next, uh, what happens is, in a general population is the risk of this particular type of cancer, uh, ALCL, is approximately 1 in 30,000 to 1 in 100,000 people, uh, more often women, of course, uh, develop uh, this particular type of cancer. And um, when you compare it to women that have uh, uh, breast implants placed, what they were finding that the risk was significantly going up from 7 times to 10 times more often with women that had uh, breast implants of the, of the silicone textured outer coat series. Uh, and therefore, they were looking at it more closely. Originally, there was only about 238 cases, but now, uh, because there's been so, such scrutiny throughout the world, that it's been uh, a lot more patients have been diagnosed with this. But the key thing that came out was a couple years ago was a study out of Australia and New Zealand, where um, the study was very unique in that all of the patients that had had textured implants were able to be evaluated uh, uh, and specifically related to the lymphoma. And they found that when comparing uh, textured implants from the, uh, the Allergan Nutriol series, BioCell, comparing that to polyurethane uh, uh, implants, they found that with the BioCell implant, you had a 1 in 4,000 chance of developing large cell uh, um, uh, lymphoma. Okay, uh, and as compared to the general population, which would, would be one in thirty thousand to one in a hundred thousand, with the uh, uh, polyurethane implant, they found it to be one in seven thousand. 
but uh, eventually polyurethane implants were pulled off the market in Europe, and so that was basically taken care of in and of itself. So now you focus back in on the biocell. Now, mind you that the plastic surgery societies have known about this problem for at least two years. And as a matter of fact, they published a commentary uh, two years ago after the Australian Government Therapeutic Goods Administration, which is equivalent to the FDA, published a, an advisory warning um, against uh, textured implants. Now, the FDA said that it had been monitoring uh, this particular condition, um, ALCL, for, since 2010, and that they were, uh, had developed a profile uh, database along with the American Society of Plastic Surgery uh, back in 2012. So they've been studying this problem for seven years, and they, they took notice, uh, Australia uh, took notice back in 2016, which was more than two years ago now, that this was becoming a serious concern. Uh, yet, the Plastic Surgery Association, the uh, American Society of Plastic Surgery and its affiliated uh, societies stated um, the following, that, uh, that it was associated with, um, with textured implants, that it was not a breast cancer but a lymphoma, uh, and that the average lag time between developing the cancer uh, and uh, um, well, having the implant placed and developing cancer is anywhere between uh, two years and 28 um, years with the, with the mean um, uh, time of approximately eight years. So then half of the women that were developing this type of lymphoma cancer, it took about eight years from the implants being in place. Uh, there wasn't really any association or they couldn't confirm that the problem is related to smooth implants. And so I'm under the philosophy of the farm body reaction related to the texture, the na nano uh, uh, structure of the implant as we see with other types of implants. But I had already discussed this in my previous video, which was approximately uh, back in March or four months ago, warning patients against this particular uh, type of implant and to consider having it further evaluated. Now here's the problem. Here's the problem. First of all, if you got textured implants in the past two years, were you properly informed by your, by your surgeon that this was a particular risk? And if you weren't, then you have an issue with informed consent. And there is where doctors are going to backpedal and say, oh, now what do we do? Well, well we, I didn't tell my patient about this problem. Uh, where that's a key issue and where it might be disingenuous by some doctors that claim that they're really looking out for the patient's, uh, uh, the concerns of the patient. But they, um, they never told the patient about this problem. Uh, never sent any information to the patients about their problem uh, and the databases that they have. So uh, I'm going on a rant here, but I, it upsets me when doctors now come and saying uh, they're posting stuff about being so concerned about their patients, but we've known about this problem for two years, okay, and at least for the past four months since I posted my last video. Uh, nevertheless, so what was my concern uh, a few months ago is this, and something that is still being stated some doctors are actually saying, well, well as, long, as, as well as the FDA, that you really don't have to do anything about this unless you're starting to show symptoms. Well, what is the number one symptom related to this problem? It tends to be a problem that you may not even notice, which means that there's fluid that builds around the implant, an inflammatory response associated with the lymphocytes or your, uh, your immune system is developing a fluid around the implant as a foreign body reaction. Well, you may not even notice that this fluid buildup is occurring, uh, and, and, it can't, and, and very often it's not picked up on mammogram. So how are you supposed to know, especially if you're going to your annual mammogram and everything seems to be okay, but they're not picking up a, a fluid buildup around your implant. Here's the key thing, if you, especially if you've gotten silicone implants. If you've gotten silicone implants, the manufacturer recommendation is to get an MRI done every three years. Were you told that? Were you told if you were gonna get silicone implants, that you should uh, consider getting an MRI done every three years to make sure that the shell hasn't ruptured or there's silicone not leaking out of your implant. Well, it's not just a mam mammogram every year. It should be an MRI done every three years if you've got silicone implants in place. That's number one and number two. Next, this particular type of condition is not cannot be picked up by mammogram. So it's a false sense of security to think that you're being treated properly if by the mammogram. So that's number two. Next. As I told you in my previous video related to this subject, one of the most common 
uh, farm body reactions that occur with implants is going to be the formation of a capsular contracture or a hardening of your implant related to your body's rejection of the implant by forming a hard capsule around it. In many cases, as the progression of the con condition of capsular contract contracture occurs, fluid will build up around the implant. The seromal fluid will build up around the implant. Uh, but this is a benign process. So in 5 to 20 percent of women, will, they will develop a capsular contracture while they have breast implants in place. And this is a benign process. So how are you supposed to compare that to a malignant process of the formation of seromal fluid around a textured implant, especially if you're not, if, if you got something that you think is a capsular contracture, or maybe you don't even have any signs of a problem at all, okay? How do you compare a benign process to a malignant process when you're not showing any symptoms? This is where I think there's a key issue, a key mistake going on with the FDA and plastic and cosmetic surgeons that are claiming it's not a big deal because the risk is only one in 4,000. I beg to differ for those doctors that actually had these implants in place that they would not want to either have them removed or have an MRI done every year or an ultrasound done much more frequently than, are, than is being recommended. So next, what are we, what is the recommendation then? Well, from the FDA, if you're asymptomatic, you shouldn't, uh, con you, you don't, you shouldn't have to consider or you, you shouldn't consider having the implants removed. And that's one position from the, uh, the American Society of Plastic Surgeons right now. Again, I beg to differ on the point because I, I'm fully aware of foreign body reactions with other types of implants and I don't have, um, a, uh, a biased opinion in the subject. You know as well as uh, for all of the subjects that I talk about, whether or not it be eShore, whether or not it be surgical cliffs, uh, post-tubal ligation syndrome, uh, whether or not it, it's uh, uh, vaginal meshes. My position is always to try to give you about as much information as I can. I don't mean to scare any patients into inadvert uh, taking out implants that are, they shouldn't be taken care, uh, taken out, but at the same time I don't want to tell you that everything's okay and you don't have to worry about them. These are key points that you need to speak with your general practitioner, with your OBGYN, with your plastic surgeon, your cosmetic surgeon, to come up with a consensus of how you're going to monitor the particular situation. So what happens if you do have a particular uh, uh, case where they do pick up seromal fluid by an ultrasound or an MRI? The general consensus is that they're going to need to draw some fluid from around the pocket and, and check it for uh, CD3, um, uh, so, sorry, CD30 positive uh, or ALK negative um, T cell lymphocytes. So that's a lot of words. Never, nevertheless, it, it should be evaluated by the pathologist and uh, oncologist to make sure that the fluid doesn't have any abnormal uh, cells in it. And if you want to prophylactically manage yourself or if you actually are showing symptoms and need to have the implants removed, the recommendation is not only to remove the implants, but to remove the entire capsule that surrounds the implants, especially if you're symptomatic. So that's the key points that I want to address. Please, the risk of the, of the particular condition is relatively low, but 10 times higher than if you didn't have the implants in place especially if you have the biocell natrile uh, implants by Allergan. And it's been asked very, very often now, well, is the company going to pay for the removal of these implants? At this point, the FDA is not recommending it. And even if they were recommending it, the uh, Allergan Corporation is under no obligation to remove your implants because it's ca it's, it is categorized as a class three uh, device they have no liability whatsoever related to uh, it being associated with a, a, a lymphoma, a lymphoma cancer. Now, who is on the hook, however, are going to be the plastic surgeons that have known about this particular, or cosmetic surgeons that have known about this problem for close to 10 years now and did not include it as part of the informed consent when discussing this with their patients. And this is key now. So you might be noticing some backpedaling from the cosmetic and plastic surgeons that place textured implants uh, in their patients and did not discuss th this particular risk with them. Um, nevertheless, so you, it's not an obvious situation, but I know for a fact that back in 2016, the American Society of Plastic Surgeons uh, sent out a bulletin to its members about this particular problem. So... Bottom line is this, if you have any concerns, uh, for my patients, 
you don't have to worry because we didn't place any textured implants. Okay, uh, next. For those that, uh, uh, that still have questions, feel free to make an appointment with us. Uh, call us at 915-595-9944. We're going to give you an, uh, an, an unbiased opinion, go over all of these facts with you. I think it's going to be very informative on a one-on-one -on -one case basis. Uh, if, if not with us, please talk to your uh, general practitioner, your OBGYN for referrals to your cosmetic surgeon or your plastic surgeon and get more than one opinion and at, at, at minimum, if you have textured implants in place, I strongly recommend that you consider having not only an MRI done or a PET scan done, but also follow up with a simple one is going to be an ultrasound, even if you don't show any symptoms. That's my uh, take and my commentary on this subject. If you have any questions, feel free to make an appointment or contact us at the office at 915-595-9944. Thank you very much. Bye.